thank you, Jeffrey, for leading us in that wonderful rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing, a song that is meaningful in the African-American sacred music tradition. I thought it was fitting as a prelude to our reflections today on the Psalm, Psalm 147, a song that invites us into a contemplation of this thought today, sing a song of faith and hope. The renowned black historian and musician Bernice Johnson Regan, she, she wrote a powerful book on the African-American sacred song tradition. She gave the book this title, If You Don't Go, Don't Hinder Me. These are the words of a tune that Regan sang and heard being sung from her youth. The song is an expression of determination and destination. It's a musical affirmation of the journey to freedom. It's a way of remembering to keep your eyes on the ultimate prize. Regan writes about these songs because the music of the oral tradition is portable. It's carried in the heart and in the mind, on the tongue and on the lips. The music is a thing you hold on to when everything else has been taken away. There's a reason we have folk tales and folk songs. The reason is that these are products of people who needed a way to preserve themselves from erasure. Our inherited songs remind us not only of who we are, but also of where we have been and where we are going. Songs teach us how to preserve our faith and ignite our hope. And our histories, our futures are often in the words and melodies of the singers and the songwriters sing a song of faith and hope. Psalm 147 is a song of faith and hope. It's a testimony to the depth, to the breadth, to the height of a God who remains present. The psalmist suggests to us that a song is a fitting way to honor a gracious God. A song does something that everyday speech cannot do. I remember my teachers in grammar school would often say, we can all sing at the same time, but we can't all talk at the same time. Now listen, if you've been on a few Zoom calls this year, you understand the problem, you understand the challenge when everybody tries to speak at the same time. You know it gets noisy, it gets confusing, it gets frustrating, it's out of sync, but something special happens when voices sing in unison. Something happens when we break out in the three-part harmony. Music has a way of turning individual voice into an organized network. I and you become we when our voices are joined in song. Psalm 147 is not a solo performance. It is a communal chorus. It is the song of a people, not just a person. It's not a declaration of personal salvation. It is a song of collective deliverance. It's a testimony to the belief that a God of cosmic creativity also cares for human concerns in the everyday. 
And songs have a way of sinking into our memory. They call forth something out of us. They seep into our skin. They permeate our consciousness. We don't just recite the lyrics or hum the tune. We embody the song. And to sing of God's faithfulness is not just a cognitive exercise. It is an expression of bodily knowledge. Have you ever known something in your body? I mean, have you ever had just a, a, a sense beyond words, something that cannot quite be described, but something that you know intuitively, internally, inherently. It's been said that the body keeps the score. The body has a kind of knowledge, a kind of awareness, a kind of memory that often cannot be translated into simple words but that knowledge is real. I come from folk who use phrases like, I can feel it in my bones. Folks who knew it was gonna rain because they felt it in their, their knee joint. Folks who say things like, I got a gut feeling, I got an instinct, I got a hunch, I got something, I got a, mm, I can't quite put it into words, but I know it in my body and I need to communicate the truth of what my body knows. Sometimes our world, our experiences, our God communicate to us in ways beyond words, sometimes in order to protect knowledge. You gotta put it in another form. Even when folks recognize the words, they don't necessarily catch the meaning. See, I think the psalmist wants the singers to know something that words can't fully capture. See, the psalm describes a God who is covering all of the bases, a God whose love is not just personal and private, but also corporate and comprehensive. A God whose greatness compels something more than words. See, some things can't just be told, they have to be sung. Now, why does singing make a difference? Listen, I know everybody's not a great singer. I know everyone is not a virtuoso performer, but the point of singing is not to be a measure of your skills and talents and abilities. See, why, why does singing matter? Because singing requires action. It requires a physical bodily commitment. It requires us to offer up ourselves. Whether we're in key or out of tune, we give something of ourselves to sing. It is a literal sacrifice of our energy and our breath. Sing is an action verb. One of my mentors taught me that when we read scripture, it's a good practice to focus on the verbs. And why is that? Because we can't always relate to, to unfamiliar names or unfamiliar locations, but what we can always find an anchor in are the, the everyday human actions, the things that people do. We can relate to people's verbs even when we can't relate to their names or their places. So when I look at this text, what do I find in the verbs? What do I find in the action, in the activity of the text? I read of a God who builds and gathers a God who constructs and reconstructs, who brings us together, who makes life in desolate places. I read of a God who heals, a God who restores the brokenness of people, the woundedness of our lives, a God who binds up wounds, who does not merely point to them and say, I'm sorry for your loss, but says, I'm going to do something about it. We read of a God who determines, a God who makes decisions, 
a God who chooses, a God who does not sit in a place of moral hierarchy and righteousness removed from context, but steps into the situation of human beings and says, I'm going to do something about it. We read of a God who gives, a God who lifts, a God who elevates, a God who casts out the wickedness, a God who covers and protects, a God who prepares, and a God who delights. My friends, it's in the verbs of the song that we understand something about the action and the attributes of God. The psalmist is calling us to recognize and to remember and to activate the actions of God. If indeed we are created in the image of God as we are fond of saying often, <clears throat> then it makes sense that to be in the image of God might also be connected to the actions of God. And when I sing a song of faith and hope, I am doing something to tap into the creative energy and activity of God in this world. We truly become co-creators with the God who has brought us through a difficult journey. The God who has looked at our situation and stepped into it, placed hands on it, breathed life into it. These are actions. And to sing a song of faith and hope is to join into divine action. It is to say that we who believe in freedom cannot rest because the coming of freedom requires action on our part and our behalf. If you don't believe in the power of song, I, I'm, I, I invite you to think on this this instance, I, I watched a video, a powerful video of a man who was elderly and who was up in years and his physical condition had deteriorated and his memory had lapsed and he had uh, signs of dementia. He was not able to recall things in the way that he could and so many of the things he'd experienced were lost to him because of his physical condition. And one day in, in the, the facility where this man stayed, a group of musicians came to visit. And they knew of this man because he had been a jazz musician in his earlier life. And so they came to visit with him and to talk with him. And they did something remarkable. They took out their instruments and started playing. And all of a sudden, this man, who at times couldn't remember the names and faces of people who came to visit him, suddenly came alive because the music communicated with him. Something embodied in him, in his memory, in his bones, in his gut, in his consciousness, began to respond to the song that was being played. Sing a song of faith and hope. Not only did his body begin to respond, but he began to put his hand on the piano in front of him. He began to play the melody of the song. He began to play a couple of chords. He discovered that his muscle memory had not forgotten what his mind had that even though his body had been transformed by the ravages of age and the ravages of time, something in his body remembered and knew even what he could not cognitively recall. Can I tell you that, that music does something to us? Can I tell you that our songs, our traditions, they call forth something out of us that we might have forgotten because of the oppressions and weights of this world? Things that have been pressed out of us, bruised out of us, broken out of us, such that our conscious mind can't access them. Oh, but our bodies have remembered. Our souls have remembered. <laughs> the ancestors who have made way for us to be here transmitted things in us that others could not see. Embedded and embodied songs and traditions and 
meanings of faith and hope in us that others could not access and could not take away. And it is only in the re remembrance of song, only in the recalling of the melody, only in the speaking forth of the chords that we begin to access that great understanding of faith and hope that moves beyond simply what we know, but what we feel, what we've embodied, what we carry in our very flesh and souls. The psalmists are reminders to us of the word that is hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against God, of the depth of faith and hope that is grounded and embedded in us, that we carry with us, that even when institutions crumble and nations fall apart and communities are torn to shreds, something in us is not broken. Something in us is not lost. And even in this strange land, we have been figuring out how to sing the song given to us. The psalmist asks in Psalm 137, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? My friends, this is the task of singing a song of faith and hope. We proclaim this truth, we proclaim this song in places that are antithetical to that possibility in places and in contexts that have sought to snuff out every bit of rebellion, every bit of resistance in us. And yet we are not without hope. I'm reminded that when James Weldon Johnson penned this song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, he put something in those words, in those lyrics that comes out when we put it to song. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us, facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Here's what I know, that the freedom and victory do not come from standing still. Our songs are portable because the freedom we seek requires us to move. If you want to sing a song of faith and hope, I hope you're prepared to move. I hope you're prepared to put faith and hope into action. I hope you're prepared to translate the words of the song into kinetic, kinesthetic knowledge that our bodies, our very being, our movement through the world is an expression of the God who has acted on our behalf. So let us act on the behalf of freedom and justice, faith and hope. For even when our bodies have been broken and bruised, they have not forgotten that faith and hope are not simply things to remember or words to quote, they are actions to be lived. And all who could said amen.